Hello and welcome, good morning or good night, whatever it is in your time zone. Today we will be taking a look at a problem 66 called plus one. This problem was given by Apple in a coding interview. So I cannot, <laughs> yeah, I don't have a degree at drawing, sorry. So let's read the problem and try to impress the interviewer. You're given a large integer represented as an integer array digits where each digits of digits i is the i-th digit of the integer. The digits are ordered from most significant to least significant in left to right order. The larger in the large integer does not contain any leading zeros. Increment the large integer by one and return the resulting array of digits. Okay, so I'm just going to go uh, from the examples just as uh, usual and we're going to be giving an array one, two, three and actually that's a fairly decent problem. We are expected to take this as a number. Now this is going to be the number 123. So I need to add one to this. So let's just say plus one. And I'm going to be expecting, I'm going to be expected from the interviewer to return an array with one, two, and actually four. Now this problem might be a bit confusing because the first idea that you might have is to actually extract each and every number or just append them into a string. So let's just say string, I'm just going to say STRA is going to be equal to each and every digit appended. And that is going to give me one, two, three. And after that, I'm just going to cast this to an int. So let's just say int is going to give me A as one, two, three. I'm going to just say plus one over here and this .NET environment over here that you can check. For example, here I'm currently writing with C sharp 10 and .NET 6, right? So you can check this here by this information box. Now, this is going to take over. It's going to handle if I, if I have 999 plus one, it's going to handle the carry. It's going to give me a thousand and I'm just going to be returning this uh, into a another array. So I'm just going to make another array placing all of these numbers over here. Now, that's what I did first. And I had a problem because uh, obviously this array can be thousand elements and this string casting it to an int or double, it doesn't really matter. It's just breaking the 64 bits and it throws an error. So we're gonna do it another way. Now I'm gonna control Z a couple of times just so I can remove all of these. And I actually removed everything, nice. I didn't know that you can do so much, so much control Z's here. So what are we going to do is we're just going to have the array one, two, three, and we're going to be starting from the end. And it's pretty simple, actually. If this is not nine, I'm just going to increment it and then I'm just going to return the list. So pretty much I'm just going to return one, two, and four. Now that's pretty simple and pretty easy, but the only problem here is if you code it up, because probably you're not going to see the problem right away, what is going to happen if I have a nine? So I'm just going to say one, two, nine over here. And obviously I will be required to return 130. So I'm just going to be required. So this is going to be the result that I need to return. It's going to be one, three, and a zero. Now, obviously if we find a nine, I'm just going to step back. I'm going to increase this and then I'm going to place this as a no, uh, zero. And uh, I'm just going to keep the carry. Now that's nice, but there's one more problem that we need to figure out. And this is what is going to happen if I have a lot of nines. So let's just say that everything is a nine. Since we're going to be adding one here, it's just going to take zero, adding the carry here one, then here, then here. And you get the picture. We are left with an array that's going to be all zeros. And that's pretty nice. That's what we want. But the final part is us checking, right? If we haven't returned anything, then I'm just going to take this array and append it in the first position, the number one, and I'm just going to return that. So pretty much I'm just going to get straight to one, zero, 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 and zero, zero. So let's code it up and see how this works in real life. Now I am going to zoom a little bit, just a little bit tiny. All right. And now I'm just going to start writing it down. So the first thing that I want to do is to make this loop that I was talking about. We want to start from the end to the beginning because we are going to be um, incrementing the most significant digit, right? And that's it to the right. Uh, it was somewhere here. Uh, where is it? The digits are ordered from most significant to least in left 
to write order. Now, as you can see, oh no, actually, as you can see, this is the biggest here, so it doesn't really matter where we do nine. All right, I guess it doesn't matter, but uh, the problem is that if I have a nine over here, I just need to put the carry down here, up here. So I'm just still going to start from the end. Now I'm gonna write four and index is gonna be equal to our digits dot length minus one. Then I'm just going to say, well, index is bigger or equal than zero because this is not gonna break my bounds and I'm gonna decrement the index. Now here it's actually pretty simple. I'm just going to take, take uh, the digits index, right? So the current digits where I'm at, and if that is less than nine, then I'm actually pretty in a good, in a pretty good position because I can say digits of index, I can say plus plus over here, right? And I can go return digits. So pretty much if I have one, two, three, as I am going to have in the beginning, let's say one, two, three, I don't have a nine here. So I'm pretty much allowed to take this, right? Increment that make it a four and just return the array. I haven't done anything, so I'm just going to say one, two, and of course here I'm going to have four because I'm incrementing this in line. Now the problem, however, comes if I have a nine and if I have a nine, I will know that I have a nine because I haven't returned anything, right? So in that case, I'm just going to say digits of the index is going to be equal to a zero. Now, as soon as I find something that it's not a nine, so for example, one, three, and nine, I wanted to write two here, but it doesn't matter. As soon as I find a nine, I'm gonna make this a zero, and then I'm just going to increment this one, right? So I'm going to say one, four, zero, and actually return it here because I am going to be into the loop over here and I'm going to perform this check. Right, well, that's pretty simple. Now, the only part that's going to be a bit more difficult is what are we going to do if we have all zeros? If we have all zeros, since we have, uh, let's say five nines or six nines or hundred nines, it doesn't really matter. What I need to do is I need to create a whole new array Right? I'm going to place a lot of zeros into it because that's how you create an array. So pretty much I'm going to say int result is going to be equal to a new int of the digits dot length plus one. Now here, when I do that, I'm just going to say that, um, let's say that I had a lot of nines, right? I had an array with four nines. So nine, 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 nine. And at the end here, everything is going to be a zero. So four zeros, right? And I'm going to create an int result equal to this. Now, when we create an int, there is a function here that's going to be uh, go through the array and uh, make every single number zero. But in .NET, we, or at least in .NET 6, we are creating this array with zeros in mind. So I'm going to have an int result with the same length of digits plus one. Now I'm going to have x, zero, 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 zero. I'm saying that I want plus one over here because I'm just going to place one here because I know that this is going to get me the right answer since I found nothing less than a nine. And obviously I didn't have the choice, didn't have the option to return the digits over here. So that's the only option where I'm gonna be left into this part of the code. I'm gonna be stuck here and I need to add a one into the beginning. So I'm just going to create this int result that I'm going to be returning. And of course, at the first position, I'm gonna be saying that it's gonna be equal to one. That's done pretty easily. Result at zero is going to be equal to one. That's pretty much all that we need to do. Now, the final part for me, of course, is to pretty much return the int array. And since I cannot return the digits because it has only zeros, I'm just going to return the result, which has the zeros from the digits. And of course, the added one over here. So. One last time, let's say that the digits is going to be equal to four zeros. And here I'm making result equal to X and four zeros. And actually it's not an X, it's uh, rather a zero. So I just make uh, int result array to be equal to the digits length plus one, but all of these are going to be zeros. So it's going to be five zeros. And of course, I need to make sure that the calculation was right. So that's why I'm just going to say, all right, in the first position, which is going to be zero in our case, place a one. And actually result is going to be containing one and the other 
four zeros that we were talking about. And just to make the picture a bit more clear, here I'm just going to say digits and we have four nines. All right, and that's pretty much it. We're just making here the digits of index zero. So at the first iteration, we're going to say digits is gonna be equal to nine, 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 zero. Second iteration is going to be equal to nine, nine, zero, zero. Third iteration is going to be equal to, you get the picture, nine, zero, zero, zero. And of course, last iteration is gonna be equal to four zeros, which is what we end up getting over here. That's pretty much it. Um, enough talking, let's see if it's actually going to work. So as usual, run code, and then we're gonna be sending it to the server. All right, good, submit. And the final part that we need to be talking about is of course our space and time. Now, since I forget it quite a lot in our videos lately, this here depends, it's going to have uh, a space complexity of constant, if we don't get to this part of the code. Now there is no such thing as if we don't get to the part of the code, you just calculate the worst case scenario. So obviously we're creating a whole new array over here. So I'm just going to say that my space is going to be a linear time. Obviously we're not doing anything fancy. So it's just going to be straight up linear and the functions, mathematical functions, if you care about them, both of them are just going to be linearly. All right. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and uh, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, please, because 60% of the guys not watching, guys watching are not subscribed. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.